Along the Grand River Trail in Glen Morris is the German woolen mill. And within its ruined walls hides a haunting past. I don't want to go in there. Gotta make a show. The German woolen mill was built back in 1867. Local history enthusiast Ruth Leffler told us a bit about the mill's builders, Sidney and Alva German. They bought land from the next door neighbor, and the reason they bought it was because out in the Grand River was a patch of rapids that's called the Mississauga, the Massasauga Rapids. And of course, having those close, that would help the raceway and give them more speed and more flow of water. Being built so close to the Grand River helped to make the mill one of the most efficient built in the area. Okay, so we just got here, and this place is super, super creepy. Like, this is like the oldest place. The other places we've been to are still like inhabited at least. This place is like full on ruin. This is super creepy, and it's snowing, and it's all ominous. We're out here in the middle of nowhere, but um, you know, it's really hard to believe that somebody moved all these stones and built this thing, you know? Although some of them do look like they might fall off at any moment, so watch your head. The fast flowing water, while making the mill productive, also made it dangerous. She did fall into the raceway and she, her body did go under the mill and uh, she did drown. Another dark stain on the mill's past is a murder that occurred here, while Tom Robson kept it as a summer home. There was a murder in the house, and it was Dan Hoover who was killed in one of the bedrooms upstairs. This killing has never been solved, fading into the background of the mill's history. It's still a cold case. They, they, they never did find out who did it. Now more might have happened here if the railway hadn't cut off Tom Robson's only access to the mill. Even though Robson did try to fight the railway in court, he lost the case and ended up having to abandon the property. Michael Toll has also done plenty of his own research, as the ruin has sparked a lot of curiosity in him ever since he found out about it. So I first learned about the mill actually on a website. I was looking at local history, and I was interested in you know what was along the rail trail, and I, I, this mill came up, and I thought I'd check it out. So it's accessible to the public, and I actually uh, walk along this trail quite often, so I thought I'd come check it out. Now, while the mill is in ruins, the myths surrounding it are more alive than ever. So some photographs have been taken here and they've seen strange lights and mists and fogs in their photos when they've gone home to get them developed. Um, people have heard voices, people have seen shadows around the mill when they've approached it at night, and uh, people have actually felt uh, tugging at their clothing as well. So just myself coming up here for the first time, I, I felt goosebumps right away just because I know about the story, but there's a, there's a certain energy here that uh, I, I can't really put my finger on. The mill's ruins stand to this day, and it attracts ghost hunters as well as hikers passing by. Its dark history makes it a lot more than just a trailside ruin. Join us next week at another ghostly location. <laughs>